All right, so we've got Jeff Cohen here, founder of the Florida Healthcare Law Firm, and uh, we've got a few topics we're going to be talking about. We're going to we're going to dive into his mind, not too deep, but uh, into some of the fun stuff in, in, in business law, healthcare law, and the healthcare industry. Um, you know, for, first, we're going to start with a little background. So, Jeff, thanks for being here. Thanks, Chex. How did you get involved and started in, in healthcare law? Well, since I was six, I knew I always wanted to be a healthcare lawyer, so I set a career path from the age of six. It's not true. None of that is true. I never even knew I never knew a lawyer. I didn't know what lawyers wanted to, what they did. I had no idea. I didn't. You mean you never saw those billboards? Be a lawyer. I want to be that guy. Right. And I never got like one of those uh, matchbox that says, can you draw this? And if you can, then you can make a lot of money drawing things. No, I didn't see anything like that. Um, You know, I stumbled into it. That's the truth. I mean, that's how it felt. Um, I was, I don't know, a semester shy of graduating uh, college the second time I went to college and and I I did I did so I go back and I and I met met somebody who inspired me to go to law school it was the guy who uh, was in charge of Amnesty International and he made a comment that made a big impression and here's the comment all of the people that work with us are lawyers and I thought oh okay I'm not sure what they do but maybe that's something I could do so I applied for law school. Um, I got in, and I was really gung-ho for the first semester and, uh, and just hated being stuck in front of books all day. So one of the things that I did is I looked for externships, you know, like doing stuff. I, I, I enjoy doing stuff and learning about stuff. Not so much. I more like to do stuff. So. One of the things I did is I interned in the House of Representatives in the HRS committee. And boy, that was just fascinating. For the entire school year, in, in I think it was my second year of law school, HRS. So I was dealing with stuff like life, life prolonging procedures and living wills and stuff I really didn't know anything about, but it seemed like it really mattered. Um, I come from a healthcare family in the sense that my dad's a pharmacist, my mom's a dental hygienist. And my dad was talking about um, something called an HMO back when I was like 12 years old. So healthcare, I saw how my folks uh, liked helping people um, through what they were doing. And I got to work in my dad's store when I was young, so I really saw it close. What's your dad do? He's a pharmacist. And he had one of those pharmacies, you know, with a, a fountain with the stools that spun. Yeah. So I got to do everything since I was a child. And I saw him interacting with people and how he loved helping people. And I wasn't aware of it as a kid, but it really made a big impact. My father and my mother like, like help, helping people. Right. So here I am in law school, I have no idea what it is. And I just decide, well, it's not gonna be pleasant, but I'm gonna get through it. When I graduated with this background of uh, the HRS committee, I still didn't know what lawyers did, so I figured, I guess, you know, I'm going to go to be a trial lawyer because I'm an outgoing guy. I like people. And I hated it. Hated it. Two years of that. I had the minus touch. Everything I touched turned to crap because I did a terrible job. Um, And I just couldn't find what I might like doing as a lawyer for the first two years. Yeah. So I wrote down on a piece of paper. Did you graduate and know exactly what you were going to do for the rest of your life as a lawyer? No, oh, I never did. I was one of those kids in school that never knew what I was going to be. And the people that knew what they were going to be, they were going to be doctors or lawyers or something. I was mystified by that. Like, how do you know that? You're 12. Yeah. You're 16. I had no idea. So, and it, it pissed me off, actually. It did. I'm like, damn them. How do they know that? <laughs> So, so how did you then jump from being a, a trial lawyer, a bad one at that, yeah. uh, to a healthcare lawyer? Because 30-something years later, you're, you're obviously not uh, in, in a courtroom every single day. No, no. I uh, wrote down on a piece of paper, if I stayed practicing law, because that was a question mark after two years of practice, what would that look like? And um, I knew it would have something to do with healthcare because I really enjoyed that in the House of Representatives. 
I knew it wouldn't be litigation because I sucked at it. <laughs> and and I hated the battle. You know, um, in those two years, I was just angry all the time and looking to fight, and I just didn't enjoy it. Um, and I knew a few other things, but I just knew bare bones. And so I started throwing my resume out, and one day I got a call to interview with Mr. Thrasher at the Florida Medical Association, and uh, I didn't know who he was, and I didn't know what that was, uh, but my buddy Tim kind of filled me in a little bit, and he said, oh, this is what it's about, and this is some of the issues that are going on. And so I went and met him for breakfast and um, in Orlando, and uh, inside of about 40 minutes, he was basically offering me the job, and it had and it met all of those like four or five criteria that I'd yeah. written down, and I was beside myself, right? But I didn't want to, you know, I was trying to be cool. I'm a young guy, yeah. and you know, you don't want to. Well, maybe I want to. I've never been to Jacksonville, right. yeah. so um, I took my then wife uh, on a weekend to visit Jacksonville, and after the first day of driving around, um, uh, John said so. <laughs> you want to work for us? And I, I did. And I loved it. I loved it. I couldn't believe every day was like, oh, my God. And, and so I got to learn about laws and then go teach people around the state, primarily physicians, about them. Yeah. And I did a little bit of litigation, a little bit of appellate work, a little bit of corporate stuff. I, I uh, supported the lobbying team um, and met with some legislators during that time and what have you. I fell in love with it. I was done. I was bit. Healthcare law. Cool. And I never even heard the term. Yeah. Yeah. So this was back in 89. Um, people still don't know 89. What means. No, because it's such a huge thing, and right. you'll get people that are like CON lawyers and they're healthcare lawyers. Yeah. Or you have somebody that's med mal defense lawyer, healthcare lawyer, right? right? Or there's us guys, yeah. the business compliance regulatory guys. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, you got everything. Yeah. So, so how did you get from FMA uh, to here? I got bored a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got bored, and then as a lawyer, you got bored. I got bored. So I was at the FMA for a couple of years, and I was kind of doing the same thing over and over. And I'm like, uh. plus I, my wife was pregnant with our second kid, and I wanted to make more money, and I was bored. Yeah. So. Um, uh, at the time, healthcare law, I'm, I go back like the Florida Patient Self Referral Act uh, of 1992, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the key pieces of legislation that we deal with even today on a daily basis started to pop around 90s. 89 was the Stark Law. Yep. Um, so I um, became the subject of a hot law firm recruitment. Yeah. Process and I started, I started going around and interviewing. Even though the idea of working with a law firm scared the pants out of me. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's scary. It's not what I wanted to do. Right. Go into law firm, but I loved healthcare law, loved it, and I knew that was my thing. I didn't know what I was going to do exactly, but I was done, cooked. I was going to spend the rest of my career being a healthcare lawyer. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And here you are today. Here I am today. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Florida Healthcare Law Firm. Mm hmm. Give us a little background on that. Yeah. I got bored. Yeah. <laughs> Again. Again. So, I, you know, uh, the short story is I was in a law firm with two partners for about 14 years. And it wasn't really a law firm, it was more like an overhead sharing arrangement. Mm -hmm. And we got along great and fine, and everybody liked each other, and we just shared the overhead. And the idea was. Minimize the overhead, take as much home as you as you could, and I was good with it, and in fact I enjoyed it. Um, and then I noticed that um, I, I was my energy was dropping off. I was getting tired every day. I couldn't understand why it was harder to get through the day and find the inspiration. I went through a lot of personal changes during that time. Um, went through what a lot of people would call a midlife crisis. Um, Grew a lot, made a lot of uh, decisions, uh, new decisions in my life, got divorced. Mm -hmm. And through that experience towards the, I don't, I don't know, the 12th year of those 14 years, 
I realized something wasn't quite right, but I didn't know what it was. And, um, and I realized uh, through having a conversation with my partners that it was time for me to go. And I, you know, it was just, I say, uh, sometimes I'll say people pray for guidance, but we don't always have the balls to go and follow it when we get it, because right. uh, it's scary. And I um, knew I needed to leave, uh, but I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do or where I was going to do it. Um, so I marched down the hall and I let one of my partners know, hey, I'm going to be leaving, and he was great about it. And uh, he's like, well, where are you going to go? I don't know. Who's going with you? I don't know. What are you going to do? I, I think I'm opening a firm. Okay, great. Yeah. And about, I don't know, three months later, I found a space. And uh, But it was like that, that decision to, to leave where I'd been for 14 years was a little bit like stepping off a cliff. Mm-hmm. And so I'm step, I've stepped off this cliff. And have this feeling of like falling. And for whatever reason, um, without having plans and clarity, uh, I wasn't freaked out about it. Um, I was increasingly excited about it. And all of the details that I needed to have to do something next, which is going to be this firm, became apparent over that time, those few months. I would wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and have this idea and start writing, start writing. So my sleep wasn't great during those few months, yeah. but the longer it progressed, the more um, I realized what I was going to do, which was to form a law firm that stood for the personal principles that became important to me. Yeah. It was going to represent who I'd become and what I thought was a better way of being a lawyer and a better way of uh, being a happy lawyer. So that's, yeah. that's what it became. And, and, and the vision was born. And the vision was born, yeah. And, and it was a weird thing, you know. Um, it wasn't my vision in the sense that it was something I, quote, came up with. I didn't feel like, you know, I always had it in the back of my mind to, to have my own firm. I, that, that was never it. It yeah. was never in my mind. So I was a little surprised when I knew I was going to leave the comfort of the overhead sharing arrangement And I was going to, quote, form a firm. I hadn't been to business school. I didn't know anything about the business of law. And um, I was a little surprised that that's what inspired me. But I figured, well, I I guess I'll figure this out. Yeah. That's that's perfect. That's what our, you know, our our next uh, sort of topic is going to be. So recognizing a time uh, to ask for help and support. So you... Yeah. You jumped into Florida Healthcare Law Firm. You're you know, on your own now. You're you know, tapping into all the uh, the business education you learned in law school, yeah, uh, which is zero. Uh, yep. And, and everything you learned in law firms before that about business, which is the zero. Um, yeah. So, you know, how, how did you know when it was the right time to ask for to ask for help or, or, or seek uh, you know like support? Yeah, early, early. Yeah. You know, I mean, I when I went into this, the first office space, which is like 26, 2,700 square feet, it was just me and two other people, one of whom was administrative and the other was a lawyer. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I knew I needed support just going in. But, so the idea of surrounding myself with people that did stuff that I didn't do, but which was needed... Uh, wasn't new to me. Mm-hmm. Um, what was new to me was learning about people. And I didn't, my framework at the time, I was very naive, honestly. And uh, I thought when somebody looked me in the eye and shook my hand that they were telling me the truth. And I thought when somebody told me what they were up to, that's what they were up to. Yeah. So I kind of took people at their word. <laughs> and I didn't know that, you know, some people are motivated by self-interest to the point where they will lie and they will be deceptive and they'll do things that cause harm. And I experienced a lot of that the first year. Yeah. But I, you know, I was a guy who, uh, who um, 
who preferred kind of rose-colored glasses in yeah. terms of look how I looked at life and people. Uh, what I didn't understand but became aware of is how harmful that is. Because yeah. I caused a lot of harm to myself and my family during that time by trusting and not having any ability to sense uh, anything other than the literal words that people were giving me. Yeah, you, you see uh, a lot of healthcare businesses and professionals run into that same sort of issue. Yes, yeah. You know, the thing that drives us, you and I, and other people like us that like to help people mm -hmm. is we like to help people. Right. So we... I noticed this kind of trajectory in personal services, uh, businesses, professions. We spend 10, 15 years really learning how to play piano very, very well, all the technical skills, to the point where we don't have to look at our, our fingers anymore. Um, but during that intensive focus on learning to be very good at what we do, uh, many of us just don't develop other skills that we need. I mean, I know many, many clients, for example, that have no ability or very limited ability to put the needs of their business first. So what happens with them is they have an employee or they have a spouse or they have a child that's constantly coming to them for help and the help is given at the expense of the business. And I learned um, by watching myself do that, that... Um, for the business to be healthy and to do what it's supposed to do, which is deliver value, you have to make it the priority, the yeah. well-being of it. And so I kind of began looking at it in agricultural terms. Like the firm is like a big orange tree. Yeah. And if the orange tree is going to be healthy and have a lot of oranges and feed the employees and the clients, the welfare of that thing has to be front and center and number one all the time. So I gradually learned that, and uh, and I I uh, learned a lot in that first year, yeah. which I call tuition. I yeah. pay, you know, one of the things they don't tell you uh, ever is that all lessons in business have a price tag. Yeah, I yeah. bet. Yeah. In addition to all the money you spend on on schooling, it's you know failing until you you finally succeed. It is. It is yeah. that. It is that. And I remember, you know, a lot of my learning I did with Autumn. Uh, after the first year in particular. And so then I had a learning buddy. Mm -hmm. And so she and I were always talking and bouncing things off of each other and um, learning what we could do differently and better and what we were missing. And, um, you know, it, we went through, I don't know, six accountants in yeah. six years, something like that. We went th at one point in the first year, I think we had uh, three lawyers and four four or five other staff people in the office. And the short story of, uh, of that year is firing all of them. Yeah. They, I, I told them they all, you know, that was it. Um, and I almost went out of business after that first year. Yeah. You know, that was at the time that I just had met Autumn and I had to rethink a, a lot of things. And one of those things is, do I really want to do this law firm thing? Yeah, exactly. Because I there was I had a moment where I explored mm, maybe I'll just go to work for somebody because I was scared out of my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, what, what do you think it was that? Who, who do you think it was, or, or what was it that was the key to you you're not going to work for somebody else? I got pissed. Yeah, yeah. I got pissed. What happened was um, somebody that I'd known uh, promised me a special kind of deal or arrangement with a firm that she was a part of. Well, you come in as a partner and you'll do this and this will be the deal. And so we talked about it with her and a couple partners multiple times. And then when I went to have a more formal kind of conversation about it, what they put on the table was vastly different than what we'd been talking about for two months. Mm -hmm. um, and this was a Friday, I remember. And I walked out of the meeting. I didn't know what to say. Uh, I was just kind of um, disoriented. Um, so I walked out of the meeting not saying much. And then um, I think it was Sunday, uh, I got a phone call from this woman. And she said, well, you know, she said, I could tell you didn't really like it. But, you know, um, 
She said something to the effect that don't take it personally, it's just business. I didn't accept any of that either when I became, you know, when I became a partner in the firm. And I thought to myself, you know, it's it's a Sunday. I'm going back to work on Monday. And I realized, you know, in in conjunction with forming a firm uh, that represents my personal values, um, that when somebody says, don't take it personal, it's just business, what that translated to me is lying is okay. Yeah. As long as there's a good business reason for it. And I... I looked at that as lying. You know, if you tell somebody one thing and then you do something else, you know, you're either lying or you're missing information but there, or there's a lack of communication, something. But in this instance, I felt lied to. Yeah. And, um, and so I knew there was no way I was going to be around people that lived like that, uh, behaved like that in, in the practice of law, and I didn't want anything to do with them. And so the answer was, you know, very polite but clear, no thank you on yeah. Monday morning, but I was fired up. Yeah. I was pissed. Yeah, I was pissed. And so um, it gave me the fire that I needed to keep going. Because at that point, that was the end of any possibility of somebody coming to me and saying, hey, you want an easier way out? There was no way out at that point. Right. I was never going to quit. And there was no back door, and there was, uh, it was just figure it out, stay in it, Learn everything, never quit. Yeah. That was what ten years ago, eleven years ago. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah. How many uh, How many team members are there now? You know, I think if we're counting people that are uh, also out, like Nancy and uh, Randy and even Rich, I don't know, sixteen, seventeen all together, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. So how do you how do you put that team together? You know, great question. Um, <laughs> I was a good catcher. Yeah. Uh, I became a good catcher. Um, if, I, if you asked me before I met you, hey, what do you think about starting something really focused on med spas and practice startups and, and all the other stuff that you do, I'd be like, that's cool. It's not my thing. Yeah. It's, not my, it's not where I'm most passionate. I noticed that and I learned this, you know, with myself and then other people around me too who helped me, including one of my best friends ever, Mark, that if I did stuff that weighed me down, if I did stuff I didn't enjoy, if I did stuff that I wasn't excited about, it would break me. It would weigh me down. Um, so when I began interviewing people, I didn't want to know what they did. I wanted to know what they enjoyed. I'm like, no, no, no. I, I, I know what you're capable of because I know your background. I want to know what you really are excited about. Because being in a situation where I was exhausted and um, incompatible you know, the last couple of years, I knew how, how much how I felt on a daily basis mattered. Yeah. You know, in terms of what I could create and the experience I would have and the experience of other people around me. So I, uh, um, you know, so that became kind of the guiding thing for me. I was looking for people who were healthcare nerds, who lived, who loved what they were doing and who seemed personally compatible because they were adults and they were excited and they were strong people and they had a passion and a mission and also, they had a lot of integrity, personally and professionally. And that's, uh, I began to look for those people. And, um, and that's really what dictated who we brought in and what kinds of clients we served. Um, Mike comes and he's like, my thing is pharmacy and, 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 um, and DME. And I thought, I just like this guy. Yeah. I like who he is. I, I like his energy. I like uh, his passion. And we need that on the boat. Uh, pretty much every law firm, I think, does that. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so, you yeah. know? I don't think people, I don't think lawyers and law firms look at things that no, way. They, I think they mostly look at they, I think most lawyers navigate by head, by yeah. thoughts. Yeah. Uh, we, your resume says. Exactly. Right. And you're saying right. the right things, so you're getting good words. Who cares if I like you? Right. I'm going to 
build you out, and that's it. We navigate based on feel. Yeah. I mean, if I had to put, you could say that in a million different ways, but we built this thing based on how we felt with that person and how we thought that person would feel with everybody else here. Yeah. yeah and we knew what we wanted to feel. Um, Autumn and I talked about it all the time. Uh, we wanted to feel happy and passionate and excited. Yeah. And that's what I feel, you know, four and a half days a week. Yeah. And so, so now is... Uh, six days a six week, days really. <laughs> as, a, as the firm grows and as more personalities come in and people, it's not just you anymore. It's not oh, just no. you and Autumn. It's not just you and you no. know, three other attorneys. It's, you know... It's the us. Team, the 16 of us. Yeah. Uh, how do you manage that? How do you manage multiple styles, personalities... And working together, working with yeah. the firm, and you know, keeping that feel of happy and fun, and you know, work hard, play hard, enjoy what we do. Right. I th- I think it's uh, it became defined by one question that we would ask ourselves all the time, out out loud, and then you know, inside ourselves, which is, uh, how can we be helpful? Mm-hmm. To not, you know, my forward facing activity was primarily it was client centric. It was like, how do I take care of these clients? Yeah. And frankly, when we were really small, I found helping the lawyers here distracting and irritating. I did. Yeah. And what I noticed was, and I think at that time we had, I don't know, three or four lawyers. Five maybe. Something like that. Maybe even more. Anyway, what I noticed was that the business, the firm, needs somebody who really uh, serves the needs of the lawyers who knows what they need, who communicates with them, listens to what they need, and gives them what they need and supports them. Yeah. I mean, they're supporting clients all day long. They need the support, personally and professionally. So I, I began to do kind of a, a, you know, change my trajectory away from primarily serving the needs of clients to primarily serving the needs of the lawyers and the staff here. Yeah. And, and that was a big change for me. It took, uh, I, I would say maybe it took three years to make that change. How do you, how do you accomplish that? Uh, some of the by screwing it up and yeah. then going back. You know? <laughs> I mean, at first, oh my God, yeah. So I, you know, God, when I started, I really took my foot off the gas as it relates to clients. And I saw the revenue immediately drop. Mm-hmm. And I, it scared the hell out of me. So I went back in, turned my back on the lawyers and focused on the clients again. And I talked about it with Autumn during that time. I just couldn't quite strike the right balance until I just made the commitment, oh well, I'm just going to lose money. And that's just the way that is because I had to make the welfare of people here front and center. Uh, You know, that's what the signs and signals of the business were were so much that. So I just bit the bullet and, uh, and, and played with that balance of clients and employees. But over the, over like about three years, we made the transition and, you know, one of the things that personal service people, lawyers, doctors, accountants know from experience, you cannot always work in the business without uh, without sometimes working on the business. Right. And the bigger a business gets, the greater the demands that it has in terms of somebody or some or group of somebodies that will make the welfare of the enterprise front, you know, the most important thing. Right. So I began, I would say I worked on the business, I don't know, 15% of my time initially. And I began working on the business over time about 80% of my time. Right. And that includes working with and for the people here. Yeah. And so my attitude shifted too. Autumn and I talked about this. It's like we used to look at the needs of the staff, you know, admin staff and the lawyers of just, God, this is an intrusion. This is annoying. I've got so much work to do. How do I balance it? And now it's just, it's what we're, it's what we're here for. Right. So it, and it was good for me. I, I must have needed to learn that in my life because what I find the older I get, the more uh, being of service is just incredibly fulfilling, right. wherever I put it, in my relationship with my wife, my kids, 
friends, everybody here. Yeah. It's just a great way to live. Yeah. That's what the, you know, this business has taught me so many things that I wouldn't have learned otherwise. One is to see things exactly as they are without pushing it into that kind of rose colored thing. Right. Um, I'm grateful that I could learn that. Uh, I was about 50 when I learned that. Um, really helps me. Um, and then the other thing is just really enjoy being available to the people that I care about. And I love it. Yeah. And that's, that's the key. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> I mean, you know, you, there's this, it's a funny thing that we encounter here sometimes, you know, and we all go through it where we're like, oh my God, I'm so tired and I just need to recharge and need to get away from people and people are draining me. And I don't find that that's true. But what I have learned from being a lawyer for a long time is that we're a little bit like batteries mm -hmm. and we have to recharge. Um, and there's certain things that we all do naturally to do it. We work out, we have time with friends, we have time alone, whatever it is. But being a lawyer and helping people here has taught me one of the big things is we all have to make sure that we take care of ourselves. You cannot take care of other people and not take care of yourself. Right. You just can't do it. It's not sustainable. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of us have that, you know, learning period where it's like, you know, we actually have to figure out what our needs are and then we actually have to meet those needs ourselves. Nobody's going to do it for us. I've met, I, I didn't learn that until I learned that. And being with people here... Um, just underscores that it's really important. Yeah, and I, I, I would uh, guess that most people don't learn that for a long time. They may no. hear it, but they don't learn it and accept it and practice it. No, and I realize you know the more angry and resentful I got with people around me, I noticed a connection. It's like, oh well, I'm not doing what I need to do for myself. Yeah, and um, so I began noticing that in the in the lawyers around me and sitting down and say hey here's what i notice and so life has a great way of teaching us exactly what we need to, to learn and so i uh, became a good student and i was just sharing with other people what i was learning and hoping that it would be helpful to them so that they could take care of themselves yeah. so there's that old story about putting the the uh, oxygen mask on yourself yeah and I'd heard it, but it was just kind of a cute story. What's and, that story? Well, it, you're, you're on an airplane, and and um, and there's a loss of cabin pressure, so all the oxygen masks come down. Things drop down. Yeah, and so what do you what do you do with them? And most people, particularly you know people that are caretakers like we are, mm -hmm. they'll be like, well, you put it on the, your kid, or you put it on the person next to you, or you put it on your neighbor, and then you put, it. like, no, 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 you put it on yourself. Because when you put it on yourself, then you can be able to take care of everybody around you. So that became, became kind of a, a visual touch point for me of like, mm -hmm. oh, I got to be on my game. Meaning I have to really take care of myself. Right. I work out. I have somebody make sure that I got water in that office, you know, because I'll neglect myself like anybody else and yeah. then I can't, can't deliver. Yeah. 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 And then I'll think it's everybody's fault around me, but it's not. Right. I just didn't take care of me. It all starts with you. Yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah.